What's up guys? In this month's subscription box, we thought it'd be really cool to show you how to make an inlay ring without the use of a lathe. So that's what we're gonna be doing. And in fact, the only power tool I'm going to be using is a Dremel. You can get one of those for less than 20 bucks. Let's go ahead and break this thing open. We'll see what ingredients we're working with this month. All right, so if you didn't know already, the way the subscription box works is every single month we send you everything you need to create a ring. And we always pack it full of more than enough ingredients for what you need for a ring. So for example, in this video, I'm not gonna be using several of the ingredients. I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to be using the Damascus steel ring blank, turquoise, pyrite, and our natural uncut diamonds. These are real, actual diamonds. So I'll be setting aside the glow powder, not using that at all for this project, and I'll also be setting aside the champagne color pigment. And we actually made a second ring where we used all of the ingredients. I'll throw some pictures of that up here. The reason we include so many things is so that you can have a ton of options. So you can keep it simple like I'm going to in this video. And you can go crazy and use every single ingredient and you can also add your own ingredients. So that's the idea. You guys get to pick exactly what you wanna make and I love when you guys share your designs in our Facebook group. Now to hold my ring in place, I'm going to be using one of my expanding ring mandrels. If you don't have one of these things, feel free to use a wooden dowel. You can put it in a vise. However you want to hold this ring down is your choice. So now I've got the ring on the mandrel. I've got this block of wood here. I drilled a hole into it. That's going to fit the mandrel in there perfectly. That's just gonna hold it in place, make it easier for me to work on and a lot easier to film so you guys can actually see what's going on. Now onto the inlaying. This is gonna be fairly straightforward. I'm gonna start with my pyrite because I wanna pack a ton of that in there. I'm just putting down a small little patch of my medium CA adhesive and then I'm using my tweezers and I'm placing in the pieces exactly how I want them. And there's no real right or wrong way to do this. You just kind of put in as much or as little pyrite as you want. And I just go all the way around the inlay until it's got the look I'm going for. Now the diamonds. I love adding these to rings for the sentimental value. I'm sure you guys have heard a diamond is forever. I just think it's quite special to know that your ring has real diamond in it. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going around and I'm making sure that I place the diamonds below the edges of the Damascus steel. This is important because diamond is incredibly hard. You're gonna have a very, very bad time sanding this inlay back down. Make sure it's below that surface. It's gonna save you so much headache. Now it's time to add the turquoise. And my strategy here is, again, very straightforward. I'm essentially just filling in any of the missing spots with turquoise. Anywhere there's space, I'm putting a piece of turquoise in there. And then once I went all the way around the inlay, it didn't look quite as natural as I had hoped. So to solve that, what I'm doing is I'm taking the turquoise, wrapping it up in this paper towel, crushing it, getting it really small, and I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle that all throughout the rest of the inlay. That'll really help add some variety to the inlay of the ring and make it look a lot more natural. Once I've got everything in place, I go around the whole ring with two layers of medium CA adhesive that fills in any remaining gaps that we missed with the inlay ingredients. Then to finish it off, I hit it with some accelerator. It's going to harden the CA adhesive really quickly. It should be ready to work on in about five or 10 minutes. All right, now we're ready to sand this down. And because I'm not using a lathe at all for this, this is gonna be a little bit tricky, but essentially I'm just taking my time here. I'm using rough grit sandpaper on my Dremel and I'm just sanding the entire outer diameter of the ring. I'm going slowly but surely. And then once I get close to getting the inlay flush with the rest of the Damascus steel on the ring, I go ahead and I start dipping the whole ring in water every few seconds. That keeps everything cool and it keeps the inlay clean. If you don't do that, you're going to sand a bunch of grime into that inlay and it's gonna look just kind of dirty and bad. So make sure to use plenty of water, that'll keep your inlay nice and clean. All right, now I've got the inlay flush. This ring is looking great, but now we need to sand and polish it. You can see there's a lot of really rough marks left from that Dremel. So I'm going to be switching over to sandpaper and we're just gonna sand this whole thing by hand. So I'm getting a nice large strip and every few seconds, again, I'm just dunking this in water. That'll keep everything nice and clean for us. Now 
Now once I've gone through all the different grits, it's time to give this a quick polish. So I'm pulling out my AstroTech Step 2 polish. This is a really great all-in-one polish. If you just have one step, this is the one to get. It's going to do a really good job of bringing out the shine and it's gonna be a lot faster than using all three of the steps. Now because this is a Damascus steel ring, we need to etch it in order to reveal the pattern that we sanded away when we are sanding down that inlay. So this step, you definitely want to take all of the correct safety precautions for. We're using muriatic acid, which is quite dangerous. If you're under 18, you absolutely should do this with the supervision of an adult. But we're just going to be using normal muriatic acid and normal hydrogen peroxide. You can get both of these from your local Home Depot. Then I'll pour it into an acid safe container. I'm pouring out about a quarter cup of each. And you'll see here, I've got my mask on as well as goggles. You do not want any of this in your lungs or in your eyes or really anywhere else. I've got my gloves on. Definitely make sure to be safe. Now before we etch it, this is important. I'm cleaning the ring very thoroughly. You can do this in soap and water, but I would definitely recommend using something a little stronger like alcohol. You can give it a very thorough wash with soap and water, or you can even use alcohol like I'm doing here. Don't use acetone because that can mess up your inlay. Now I'll go ahead and just dunk it in the acid and I'm going to leave it here for about 30 minutes total, but I'm going to make sure to flip it about two or three times every 10 minutes or so. And if you see it slowly bubbling, like you can see in this time lapse, that's a good sign. You don't want too many bubbles. That's going to be too fast. That can be dangerous. But if it's not bubbling at all, I suggest adding a little bit more hydrogen peroxide. Now once the etching is done, you need to neutralize the acid. So you're going to take the ring, and you're going to want to put it in some baking soda water. That will neutralize the acid, make sure that it's safe to touch. Also a side note, you should just keep a box of baking soda handy while you're doing this. If you have any acid spills, you need to immediately neutralize it with baking soda. All right, now before the grand reveal, what I like to do with Damascus steel after I etch it is I like to take some high grit sandpaper, so 500 and 1000 grit is what I'm using here, and I use that to highlight the raised sections of the Damascus steel. So all of those raised edges are going to get sanded and they'll just be a lot more shiny. That will give the ring this awesome contrasty look. Now one final polish with my AstroTech Step 2, and this ring should be finished. Here it is guys, check out this look. I think this thing looks incredible. We've got the Damascus steel that just has such an amazing premium look to it. And I love that pyrite and turquoise. They just go together so well. Such awesome contrasting colors and so many fun little details in there. Where we didn't add any of the glow powder to this ring, the inlay is left completely transparent. That lets you see down in and see all of the different details of all the small little pieces of pyrite and the turquoise. Just so much depth we have going on there. Not to mention the little diamonds that you can see here or there. What an awesome ring. And literally the only tool I use, you guys could see in the video, was this Dremel. You get on Amazon, I think you can get one for as little as $17. So there you have it guys. If you're looking for a fun new project to get into, this is one I would highly recommend. If you wanna check it out, we'll have a link to the subscription box down in the description below. If you don't wanna sign up for the subscription box, we also sell them just by themselves. So we'll have links to everything you need. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, do be sure to let us know. We'll be sure to get back to you. Also join our Facebook group. We have an awesome community built there. So yeah, if you're making your own rings, be sure to post them in that group. Tag me there, I wanna see them. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.